Do I really need to put my phone on airplane mode? What are those little holes at the bottom of windows on airplanes? Why do airplane wings curl up at the end? What are those little white trails that you see in the sky following an airplane? Do airplanes get struck by lightning? Can planes land with no visibility? Today we're diving into the surprising truths behind common questions about planes, busting myths, and revealing what most passengers didn't even realize. So the inspiration for this video actually came from another video that I watched on a different channel called Veritasium. They did a great job of answering common questions that I didn't even know I had about planes. It's a great video and I would highly recommend going and watching that one. They do a great job explaining in detail the answers to all these common questions. I'll make sure to link it below. But this video then got me asking a bunch of other questions. Questions that I was eager to find the answers to. So I did quite a bit of research for this video to find out answers to what are probably pretty common questions, but are things that the average person just doesn't really know. I learned a lot from researching for this video and hopefully you learn a lot throughout this video as well. Question number one, do airplanes get struck by lightning? Actually, yes, they do, and probably more often than you think. Commercial airlines on average get struck by lightning once to twice per year. According to the FAA, it is estimated that commercial airlines are struck by lightning once every 1,000 hours of flight time. I found this to be quite surprising, but you don't have too much to worry about being that modern day airplanes are built to withstand lightning strikes. Essentially, if your plane gets struck by lightning, that current is directed to the outside of the plane and then is released back into the atmosphere. So you don't need to worry about the passengers on the inside of the plane or any critical instruments on the plane. That should all be protected by, you know, just modern technology and design in newer airplanes. So ideally, you don't want your plane to get struck by lightning, but you should be perfectly safe if you do. So no stress. Have you ever wondered what those little, you know, those little curls are at the end of airplane wings? Those little parts that kind of curl up towards the sky? Well, I was wondering, so I set out to find the answer. And those little curls are called winglets. I think that's the perfect name that describes what a little curl would be at the end of a wing, winglet. There's quite a few reasons why planes are designed like that, but there's one major reason, and that is efficiency. The winglets on a plane are going to create less drag and with less drag that means you can move through the sky quicker with less energy and if you're using less energy that probably also means you're using less fuel and if you're using less fuel you're probably saving a lot of money and airlines love saving money so that's the main reason why winglets or that little curl at the end of wings are there. Taking off and landing in a plane can be pretty stressful and it's pretty much completely out of your control. You put your life in the hands of what are hopefully two capable pilots. But it can be even more stressful during inclement weather. I mean you look out your window and you can't even see the ground. Can a plane land with zero visibility? Let's talk about it. In short, the answer is yes. A plane can land with zero visibility, but it kind of depends. Pilots actually go through extensive training to replicate exact situations like this. Being able to land the plane with no visibility. But still, a lot is dependent on the type of aircraft they are flying, as well as where they are landing. Because every aircraft and every airport has different instruments to help this sort of situation. One very common instrument that pilots lean into a lot is called auto land, which you can probably imagine what that does. 
This will help pilots land a plane with 100 meters of visibility and even as low as 75 meters of visibility planes can land. Now there's a lot of different instruments that help a plane land without visibility and I'm not qualified enough to be talking about all the technical aspects. Either way, there's not too much to stress here about because pilots are well trained in this exact situation as well as as technology advances, it becomes more and more safe to land a plane without visibility. Speaking of other stressful situations, let's say you lose power to an engine. Can the plane still fly and land properly? The answer is yes, it can. And pilots, again, are specifically trained on this type of situation to land a plane with just one functioning engine. Though I will say that these days, this is not a very common occurrence with advancements in airplane engines and technology in general. So it's not something that you necessarily need to worry about, but if the rare does happen, the pilot should be able to land the plane safely. I'm a window seat guy. I love looking out the plane. I like to film out the window. And every time I look out the window, I notice that there's always this small little hole at the bottom of the window. And if you're a window seat person, you know what I'm talking about. This little hole at the very bottom of the window. What the heck is that for? These tiny holes on an airplane window are called breather holes, which probably gives you some insight into what they do. As the plane climbs in altitude, the pressure on the outside of the plane drops, while the pressure on the inside of the plane remains high. Airplane windows are made up of three separate panes of glass, and the hole on the middle pane of glass allows for air to move between the cabin and the air gap between the window panes, balancing the pressure and protecting the window from breaking essentially. In an emergency, the holes help prevent the windows from cracking or damaging if they have to increase or decrease in altitude quickly. Can you open up an airplane door mid-flight? Well, I thought the answer to this question had been discovered just recently with that guy that opened up the plane door about 800 feet off the ground on that Asiana Airlines flight. Did you guys see that in the news? So I assumed that it was possible, which then got me thinking, how should that be possible? Anyone can just open up the airplane door mid-flight? Well, after some research, the answer to that is not quite as simple as you might think. I discovered that opening up an airplane door mid-flight is actually nearly impossible. And I'll circle back to how that guy on that flight maybe did it. And the reason is what we just talked about. There is a very big pressure difference between the outside of the plane and the inside of the plane, which effectively like seals the door shut. To give you some context, let's talk about some numbers. So if you are flying at 36,000 feet, the pressure that would be needed to overcome and open the door would be more than 24,000 feet pounds of pressure, which is essentially impossible. Also, I found out that airplane doors don't actually lock. Airplane doors are always unlocked because in theory, they're impossible to open mid flight. Now you might be wondering, how did that one guy open up that plane door? And even experts are a little confused still, because in theory, it shouldn't be possible. Really, their only explanation that this guy was able to open the door is because they were at such a low altitude. They're at only 800 feet. Therefore, there's a small chance that somebody could open up the door. But even still, experts are quite confused. Is there a difference in air quality depending on where you sit on the plane? Because I've heard before that if you sit near the front of the plane, you're going to have better air quality than if you sit near the back of the plane. Is that really true? Well, I'll say this. Depending on where you sit on the plane, you might get different smells, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your air quality is going to be different. For example, if you sit near the bathroom, you're probably going to smell that. <laughs> 
If you sit near where they're preparing food, you're probably gonna smell that. If you're sitting next to somebody that hasn't showered in three days, or even worse yet, passing gas, you're probably gonna smell that. In general, even with tons of people on the plane, as well as lots of different smells, the air quality on planes is really good. Being that the air gets completely recycled every three minutes. So to answer the question, no, it does not matter where you sit on the plane and what kind of air quality you're going to get. It's good to know that we're getting fresh air on planes, but we all know that airplanes are super dry. Bloody nose. And I recently heard someone say that airplanes are actually drier than the Sahara Desert. So I wanted to find the true answer to that question or if that was just somebody being dramatic. Okay, so here you go. Airplanes have a typical humidity level of about 20%. Whereas in your home, you have a average humidity level that sits right around probably 50%. And the Sahara Desert sits at right around 25 to 30% humidity levels. So, in fact, an airplane is drier than the Sahara Desert. And that's probably why you always feel a little bit of a scratchy throat or a dry nose or dry eyes when you're flying. So it's probably a good idea to, as I always preach in my videos, but as probably a lot of other people preach as well, make sure you're hydrating, bring lotion, maybe bring some Visine to moisturize the eyes, as planes are in fact super, super dry. Have you ever been traveling and you come home and then all of a sudden you develop some sort of like sickness or just a little bit of a cold? Well, I would have to imagine that's pretty common for most people, being that traveling is pretty dirty, especially if you are traveling in an airplane. There's a lot of people getting crammed in a small area. So I was curious, what is the dirtiest or germiest part of the plane? I wanna hear your guess down in the comments. Let me know, what do you think is the dirtiest part of an airplane? Well, as you can probably imagine, the dirtiest parts of planes are the parts that get touched by the most hands and bodily fluids. So places like bathrooms, armrests, seat covers, tray tables, overhead bins. These are all gonna be breeding grounds for germs and being that they get touched so often. But what is the dirtiest? According to a study done in 2015 by Travel Math, they conducted tests on all hard surfaces of an airplane to in fact find out what the dirtiest part of the plane was. And they found out that tray tables are the dirtiest part of an airplane. Tray tables had more than eight times the amount of bacteria per square inch than even the flush on a toilet in an airplane bathroom. That kind of blew my mind. So I would recommend before you lay your head or your food on that tray table, you might wanna give it a little wipe down, a little disinfectant wipe it might not be a bad idea. Have you ever been looking up at the sky and see a plane flying, but also behind it, there's kind of like this white trail, almost like a cloud, a white cloud that kind of follows the plane. Those are called condensation trails. And if you've ever noticed, you've probably only seen them on planes that are flying really, really high up. And that is because planes need to be at a certain altitude for this to happen usually greater than 20,000 feet. There are really three things that you need for condensation trails to happen. The first being altitude, the second being water vapor that comes from the engines, and the third being cold temperatures. With all three of those things, you will see the condensation trails, that white cloud that is behind a plane. Now you might be wondering, why do I not see this on every plane? And the answer is because it needs that perfect formula for condensation trails to form. Okay, this one I'm excited to share with you because this has been a burning question of mine for the last three years and I finally did some research to figure out what this question is all about. And that is, what happens if I don't put my phone on airplane mode? 
I've always been intrigued by this question because I feel like we've all been there before where we've taken a flight and whether it's intentional or not, we forgot to put our phone on airplane mode and really nothing happened. But you're also asking yourself, well, why do they still say it at the beginning of every flight if it wasn't important? But I know for a fact that not everybody's putting their phone on airplane mode. With that being said, I do put my phone on airplane mode because I have found that it really extends the life of my phone's battery. I get way more battery life out of it because it's not like searching for cell towers. Currently in the US, it is federal regulation that you do not use your phone in flights, which is why they still say it at the beginning of every flight. But I should also mention that this is not the case everywhere. For example, Europe. Europe in 2023 started allowing passengers to use 5G service on their flights. So what's the deal? Do I still need to put my phone in airplane mode even though in Europe I don't have to? Well, the idea originally for airplane mode was that it's a safety measure, being that it could cause interference with pilots' ability to communicate with air traffic controllers, being that phones emit radio waves, which again, could cause interference with the pilot's radio. But there's no studies or there's really been no science to actually back this theory. Also, there's been no plane crashes that have been found to be caused by people being on their phones. So, I'll continue to let you decide whether or not you put your phone in airplane mode. I will say, it does save your battery life, but you're probably also not going to cause a crash if you forget. Let me know down in the comments, do you put your phone on airplane mode? Hopefully this video helped answer some of those burning questions that you had in your head about planes, or at least you maybe learned something that you didn't know before about planes. Either way, I had some questions and they needed to be answered, so I thought I would make a video about it. If you enjoyed this video, I would also recommend checking out the video we made about must-have economy travel essentials. These travel essentials will help make your economy flying experience quite a bit more comfortable. So if you enjoyed this one, check that one out as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it enjoyable or helpful, or you think I should make videos like this more in the future. As well as subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We will see you in the next video. Whew.